Hello all, I'm the practitioner, and welcome to The Expert Layman. Hello all, welcome to The Expert Layman. I am your host, The Practitioner, and this will be the start of my new official web series. Uh, so far I've been doing just video rebuttals uh, and video uh, concepts, talking agnosticism to uh, skepticism to science, to politics, to uh, morality, uh, to parapsychology and the paranormal. I will be, and having done the odd magic trick in between, I will be attempting to collect my show now into a uh, much more... Um, rigorous and much more uh, intense show. Each show will cover a topic, uh, generally a critical thinking topic of one sort or another, and how to live in our society. Um, I will be on occasion bringing guests on, um, interviews, etc., from uh, other YouTube members, um, other experts I can find who can come in on the show, and um, etc. I'm also posting a... Um, I'm also po um, I would also recommend that you uh, follow on to Blog TV. I will be posting shows in the corner here when I will be doing my live broadcasts as the practitioner on Blog TV. So um, when I've got those shows scheduled, uh, please drop over to blogtv.com and to um, come and watch. Uh, I will be doing science demonstrations, magic, um, suggestion, hypnosis, uh, a little bit of extrasensory perception testing for those of you who happen to claim to have uh, paranormal capabilities. Um, and luckily I happen to have a couple of tests uh, rigged up which uh, remove sensory cues. And uh, the odd few other uh, odds and ends in between. Um, we will be exploring uh, everything uh, and anything. Any topic is up for debate. And um, yeah, I will also be doing uh, teaching a course on how to do formal style debate. Um, uh, as I'm currently now in a new debating course, a uh, new debating club, um, I will be uh, conveying to you guys what I learned from there um, in the hopes that uh, you guys can learn how to handle formal debate and the like. So, that having been said, uh, I now have another uh, less than nine minutes in order to be able to, sorry, less than, less than eight minutes to um, do my topic for this week. My topic for this week is going to be the Canadian political system. Um, I would like you guys to know, uh, for those of you who are Canadians and are watching this, you are probably aware that the head of the Green Party is now, uh, has now actually been able to get their place in the debates. Um, I have been hoping for this for a long time coming, uh, considering the fact, and this is something I would have to say about the American system as well. I would think that de facto, um, uh, you know, at first it seems like our country, our respective countries, Canada and the United States, seem to be run by oligarchies. And I'm talking in the political sense. Why do I suggest this? Because of the fact that there are only a certain type, of, uh, a certain few parties uh, in Canada, and only two parties in the United States, who get to take part in executive debates, either prime ministerial or presidential. Now, Things have changed in Canada a little bit to the point where the Green Party has now finally gotten at um, its own word and edgewise. But here's the thing, and this is what I'd like to say on a much broader scale. I'm not a supporter of the Green Party. However, I think that in both the Canada and the United States, we shouldn't be having just the two major political parties or the major groups of political parties only allowed to take part in the debates. If any party manages to, say, even get a few percent of the national population backing them, they should have the rights to be able to send their leader, elected leader representative into the debates to have their say. 
Because if they even get that few percent of the population into the party, you know, and I'm talking on a national level here, then chances are they might be a force to be reckoned with, and they should have their say as well, representing a minority uh, contingent. Hence, Ralph Nader should be allowed to speak on behalf of the Green Party in the United States in the presidential debates. And if any other party, such as the Natural Law Party, or even uh, a right-wing party, uh, you know, a, a new libertarian party, managed to uh, get a, a substantial following in the United States or Canada, they too should be allowed to have a presidential candidate um, enter the elections and run, uh, you know, and be allowed to speak in the presidential debates. The whole concept of, and prime ministerial debates, the whole concept of freedom of speech is to allow for any political movement to be able to speak their mind. Well, doesn't that uh, freedom of speech apply in, uh, in the debates for, uh, for electing our leaders as much as anywhere else? That's just my uh, take on it, of course, though. The second thing I'd like to see, and this is in both Canada and the United States, I would like to see the Senate put on an elected basis, but for a lifelong term. The reason why I'd like to see this in Canada is because of the fact that our, Can our Canadian Senate has been appointed and has been in for too long. But, however, um, the original mandate of the Senate in Canada was supposed to be picked to represent by region and also to allow for a um, uh, also to allow uh, for uh, thinking of long term. So basically, the uh, the long uh, the long uh, term sitters could be people who could be sitting from term to term and think about you know the repercussions of political acts down the road. Um, you know, while well, the political party was only thinking a few years down the road towards the next election. So I would like to see that put in. But I would like to see those people elected by the public to be the conscience of the public for long term. There's a second thing I would like to see. Owing to the fact that both Bush and uh, uh, Stephen Harper seem to have uh, uh, taken, uh, seem to have not particularly regarded the evidence one way or the other pertaining to climate change, and considering that uh, there does seem to be a certain amount of politi uh, politicization of science uh, or taking of scientific data, regardless of uh, whichever um, uh, time happens to be in, I would like to see the National Research Council of Canada uh, have their word acting as force of law on any scientific issue when it comes to government uh, requiring to... Um, Canadian government requiring to allocate funds for scientific research and taking uh, the recommendations of science uh, of the uh, National Research Council. If an issue is going to be a long-term effect, if an issue is going to have a long-term effect on the Canadian public, I would like to see, and if there's scientific evidence to back it up, and specific scientific evidence to demonstrate what the best solution is out of it, the NRC's word should be listened to, not disregarded based on politics of the day. It should be treated as the force of law. Anyway, that's just my own opinion of it, and I also think there should be, um, uh, in the U.S., I'd like to see something similar dealt with in relation to science. Let the actual scientific community work, uh, hash out what's going on, and then we take what the actual evidence says, not just based on some scientist's word, but based on what the National Academy of Science says after all the evidence has been reviewed. They are supposed to be impartial, and as long as we can protect them from lobbying, this would be a much better uh, system to handle uh, issues like this. Uh, the third thing I'd like to see is greater accountability, and this includes both the National Academy of Science and the National Research Council, and for governments. There should be full accountability of all budget constraints, money, uh, scientific reports, etc., fully referenced, and a gradient scale be placed online. This way, anybody can come forward, and um, you know, this way, if uh, in order to account for, uh, in order to provide greater accountability, and to allow for experts to challenge. Uh, what the governments are doing or what have you, they could have various different scales. You could either have the basic summary of what was in the reports going all the way through to the most inten to the actual full intensive report. And that full intensive report having all the mathematics and everything involved, so that's why people can take a look over it, see if there's any flaws or see if there's uh, uh, something wrong with the argument, and then present a counter-argument if they have to, or approve it. But at least then people are fully informed, or at least have the option to be fully informed. Anyway, these are my three precepts for how government could be better run. Um, you know, especially considering what with the uh, federal elections coming up in both Canada and the United States, I'd like to see some of these possibilities at, at least hashed out and considered for um, constitutional changes, uh, respectively, to the American and Canadian uh, legal systems. Anyway, that's just my opinion. Um, I'm uh, opening this subject for debate. Um, what, how would you guys like to see the government improved, if at all? Or do you think that the current government systems in Canada and the United States are good as they are? Um, Post a comment, a video comment below, or a video response, please, and I will be looking forward to hearing you guys for debate. So, that's my uh, thoughts. I'm the practitioner, signing off.